In Bud's Creek, Maryland, American Husqvarna rider R.J. Hampshire became just the third different winner in the 250 class this year. But adding to another podium finish to his impressive season, Australian teenager Jet Lawrence moved another step closer to defending his 250 title. The penultimate round of racing in 2022 is moments away. The 250 class is at the starting gate. Two rounds remain in the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing in the 2022 season. It is the Tucker Freight Lines Ironman National from Crawfordsville, Indiana. Well, all year long, we've been joined by legends in the booth. I'm Jason Wygant. Today, we bring the six-time AMA National Champion, Brock Lover, back inside the booth. And it's awesome to have the Golden Boy back with us today. Adam C. and Cirillo under the weather was scheduled to be in the booth with us. But Brock, you're becoming a veteran of this TV game, and you've been trackside or in the booth all year. So you've watched this 250 class unfold. A lot of riders, as the year has gone on, really improving their game. This has been one of the most exciting seasons I've ever witnessed in my entire life, and it's been a long, long time fought watching motocross. <laughs> and, and this year, particularly, it's fun to watch the Lawrence Brothers. And it started off as Lawrence Brothers show, and then it's turned into now Joe Shimoda's joined the mix. And he's not only joined the mix, but he's actually moved himself into second place. And then out of nowhere, kind of, uh, RJ Hampshire comes up with an overall win last week of Butts Creek. But it's still the Jet Lawrence show as far as the points are concerned. He has a 37-point lead. If he can leave here with a 50-point lead, he could wrap the title up one race early. So how do you think he plays it today? I think he tries to get up front and take what it comes to him, but if it, you know, if it doesn't, he's not going to force the issue. I mean, again, a 37-point lead with just four motos left, that's quite comfortable. So I would not push it. I would just try to click off the motos and just uh, time's on your side. Here's the racetrack they will be racing that's on, it. MX versus ATV Legends track map. All right, Brock, what's Iron Man all about? Iron Man's about a lot of really, really good dirt. We've talked chocolate cake mix here, but also a lot of elevation change and the steepness of some of these jumps. I mean, this is crazy. This is a Godzilla jump right here. Almost impossible to walk up that jump. We did it on a track walk on the MX Combine, and uh, most of the riders were having to traverse across it. So again, big jumps, big air, great, great dirt. And uh, one thing that every rider pretty much you'll see, there's two words that nearly every rider uses to describe this track, tough, and ruts, and uh, we're fortunate we don't have 100 degree weather or we don't have rain today, it's perfect. But again, lots of ruts and it's a tough track. And the story of the 250 division, which will be the first race today, Jet Lawrence, 37 point lead. Let's see if he can wrap up this title for the second straight year a week early. Gonna be tough against this field and a lot of new young riders starting to join the ranks as well. Hayden Deegan making his pro debut. Stay with us. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Ride along with Pierce Brown here. This is from practice earlier today on his Charlie Designs Red Bull Gas Gas. Got the GoPro camera mounted behind the front number plate. Beautiful view over Godzilla at the top of Ironman Raceway. So that is one view of the track. Spectators have got trackside to get their view, and here's what you will see on television. So much news developing in this 250 class. Potential title wrap for Jet Lawrence, and then a lot of uh, new riders jumping into the championship. So let's welcome some of the new riders in. Send it down to Jason Thomas. A lot of excitement today for Hayden Deegan's debut in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Now, I spoke with his father earlier, and you would think there's a lot of expectation, and can he get on the podium in his first race ever? And it really wasn't that. It was more of just tempering expectations. And more than anything, his dad just wants him to learn here. He's got elite-level riders like Justin Cooper on the team that he can just watch and see what they do on the course of a race day. And the results don't really matter, right? He just wants to be better, and the next time they come here, be a little bit more prepared. So Hayden Deegan was racing the Scouting Moto Combine at Redbud and absolutely dominated. So the plan was to race the Combine for amateurs here, but he did so well there. They kind of fast-tracked him. He could go back to the amateur races if he chooses to. So a big leaning, learning experience for him today. I don't know if they expect him to lead or win or anything like that. And we had a chance to actually ask Hayden himself earlier what his expectations were for today. Uh, my hopes to accomplish are uh, be, you know, be there the whole moto. The whole 35, not drop off, and uh, 
just stay in the fight, you know? I don't know exactly where I'll stand. I haven't raced against these guys, but wherever I'm at, I want to make sure I keep pushing forward and uh, get some good starts. And uh, Deacon also dominated uh, one of his classes at Loretta Lynn's, the Big Amateur National, a few weeks ago, and he's got a big following on YouTube. So that's where a lot of the attention comes from, if you folks are wondering. Now, as we focus on this race, what are our KTM's key keys to the moto, Brock? Well, the obvious, the good start. Ironman is exceptionally uh, important to get a good start here. They have a lot of ruts, and if you get caught behind four or five, maybe deep in the field, you're not going to make it uh, make it through and nail the ruts. It is an important track to be able to be a good rut rider, and that's what you're going to hear all the riders talk about. However, I got to say, this track at one point had built up this rep for these unbelievably deep, long ruts. It has ruts today, but not quite as long and deep as they were years ago. Well, we've had unseasonably dry lack of rain in the area yeah. and that is and is what it is we've come here always extreme elements this is our ninth time coming here and we've had rain we've had 100 degree weather yeah we have none of that it's perfect weather limited rain so the track's not as deep as it usually is yep riders talking about being able to hop around and get out of those ruts because they're not as long justin cooper no surprise was your monster energy fastest qualifier today he actually topped both sessions he's still trying to get his first overall win of the year he's had a couple moto wins over the last few races last week was a little under the weather which kind of feel like that overall win for him is almost inevitable at some point before this year is over so much to talk about jet lord still leading the points joe shimoda rj hampshire you mentioned on the top of the show coming on strong uh, also another pro debut is gavin towers today so a lot of new riders joining the ranks other riders finding their form as the year goes on. It's the opposite. Normally the field gets weaker as the season goes on. And we've been adding to it in both classes, actually. We had a couple of factory riders come back as we're sitting here looking down the start here. Long start, uh, not as long as it used to be, but into a sharp 90 degree right hand corner. And that's uh, it's important to be up front through that corner. So here we go. First race for four hours of coverage here on MAV TV. It's time. That's one of the riders I think Cooper banged into out of the gate, and it's going to be Nate Thrasher and RJ Hampshire. Thrasher is going to grab the motorsport.com hole shot, but Cooper turns the number one gate pick into a bad start. He got bumped and banged around, but his teammates in the lead. Last week's winner, RJ Hampshire, went around the outside of the first corner and was able to put himself in the second position there. Had a little bit of a bobble there, but he's able to hold on. We see number 36, Max Bolin, on the factory KTM in third. Yeah, Bolin making some moves. He got. Guillaume Ferez, the young rider out of Spain who opened some eyes last week, running in fourth right now in the 109. And then it's Jet Lawrence, your series leader. Look at Bowen. Not seen many good starts out of Max this year, but he's quietly been riding very well. And now we're getting to see what he can do up front. And the riders, you already see them using the edges of the track, trying to avoid the main ruts with a lot of the bumps in them. And so they're using the extreme le left and right. And here they head towards the big monster jump. And I, there are so many big air jumps out here. It's great <laughs> for the riders, great for the fans. But it's uh, surprisingly a lot of elevation changes at Ironman Raceway in such a flat part of the country. Bolin still putting serious heat on Hampshire right now, but so close to the podium a couple times this year, the 36. Second generation rider out of Northern California, and he's in position early today. Yeah, just passed his father on the way to the TV compound just a little bit ago, Talon Volan, but uh, surprising. Max qualified 12th, and he's uh, running up front, pushed, putting a lot of pressure on last week's winner there. And uh, RJ Hampshire, he's, uh, he's trying to rebound and uh, do a back to back, and we'll see what happens. And then how about Fenez the Spaniard back there in fourth? I talked to him before this moto. He works a regular job in a grocery store in the winter back in Spain, and he can't race with us next weekend because he has to go back and race in the German Championship. As you see, Volan continue to put heat on Hampshire. So, and he, Fenez rides a KTM overseas. He had never ridden a Yamaha until two weeks ago. Got six in our first moto last week, running fourth in this moto here. And right there with last week's winner, Hampshire. Oh, and uh, we hear a crash for Michael Moseman. Wow, that was impressive by Volden. Happened to Moseman here. He's in the right uh, side. Oh, end over end. That was my third key to the to the race for the 250 riders. Uh, these guys have to stop doing this. This is immaturity, pushing too hard early in the race. Uh, it, there's a lot of riders who do this in the 250. You just don't see it that often in the 450s. The riders just have more maturity. It's the bottom line. So, and it's happened to Mosebin quite a bit this year. He's had the speed, no doubt. Godzilla, the big uphill triple. And they're keeping Thrasher in sight. 
You know, I was saying Volan, we haven't seen many good starts this year. Kind of the same story on Thrasher. I think he's been faster than the results show. But we have not seen him up front like this very often. Well, we talked about Dust Justin Cooper qualifying. He nearly 1.5 seconds faster than Jet Lawrence. But that star racing team you know, is just packed with so many people that are able to go. Right. Those riders are so fast. They race against each other. And Hayden Deegan, we talked about that. But uh, Thrasher ended up qualifying fifth. Levi Kitchen was seventh. So they have a lot of top riders. And Lawrence has moved around Perez to get into the number four spot. Jet Lawrence, your series leader. And somehow Justin Cooper is with him. I don't know how Cooper is able to recover, but he's right there behind his young teammates. So some of the contenders moving back toward the front. But Volan might be the story right now. He's got around Hampshire. He's up to second. It's coming out party for Volan we've been waiting for. It is. I mean, I, I didn't realize that Max could ride at Ironman Raceway so well. I mean, he's stopped from Sacramento area and, uh, you know, comes out here and is really putting in a fabulous early moto here. And Nate Thrasher, who's never won a moto in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, leads. See if Volan can get him down. I don't know how many people had Thrasher and Volan 1-2 on the bingo card early in this moto, but that's what we keep saying. This 250 field is getting more unpredictable with each week. It usually doesn't go that way. <laughs> it's, it's exciting to watch, and uh, it's, it's hard to announce, but it's, it's fun for the fans. And being a fan of the sport like so many other people are, it's, we like to see a lot of mix, mixing it up and a lot of different winners. Yep. So Thrasher right now, one of six riders that they have on that star racing Yamaha team right now. We'll show you the pass, Boland around Hampshire here in the box. Yeah, he just ends up, gets a great drive, but he scrubs the jump and just carries a little bit more speed there and comes up into the tree corner. That tree corner is usually the inside lines of fastest rut, but as it gets more dug up deeper, they start moving around, and we're really seeing that on the track right now. The riders at this point, the track hasn't gotten rough enough to where they can't use the edges, but pretty soon those edges, extreme edges, are going to get rough enough. They're going to have to probably start going back into that deep rut that we just saw on the screen. It's you, it, th Those things are two, three feet deep, and they're going to get nothing but deeper. Boland, by using some different lines, Brock is closing on Thrasher. We have a battle for the lead now. This is incredible right now. I mean, <laughs> Boland is running. Last lap was a 2019. He's the only rider into the 201s. Uh, Thrasher did a 204. Two, four. So we're going to see right now what happens if he's got that extra half a second. And that half a second is about what we're seeing on the screen. And we're seeing them pull away from Hampshire last week's winner. Then it's Jet Lawrence, Cooper, Fedez, Hunter Lawrence, seventh, McAdoo, Hamaker, and Shimoda. Round out the top ten. Volan has got a bead on the inside. He's trying to get down and make that move. Yep, being riding in second place here, it gives him the luxury of picking some different lines and seeing where he's faster or maybe he's not faster than Thrasher. But right here, he's doing what it takes. Look at these lines. You see outside the great drone cam footage right here. Right here, coming into a right-hander. Max is on the inside of right before the finish line. Might have it right here. No, Thrasher gets a better drive. That rut really caught Volan. Yep, coming down here is one of the trickier sections on the track here at Ironman Raceway. It's usually very rutted and bumpy, but you're also trying to take a glance over your mechanic's chalk chalkboard to see what he's riding on it. But really, for safety first, I don't think the riders can always see what the mechanics are putting on that board. Yeah, that's a typical section without trying to look over and read. As for Volan, he's been around fourth and fifth in a ton of motos this year, I think five times but it's not gotten that moto or overall podium. So that's what's on the line right now. No better way to get in the podium than to win it, but same story for Thrasher. Doesn't have a moto podium this year, and now running in the lead, and seven minutes have quickly clicked off here, and you're not seeing the press coming from either Hampshire or Lawrence, they're all alone. And I'm, I'm not making excuses for Jet Lawrence by any means, but a 37 point lead, this is a track that can reach out and bite you. The, I'm, I'm sure the Honda camp has told him, just take what the, your start, take what the track gives you, don't push it. Oh, you, you just need to wrap up this championship, and it can come because we see right here his nearest contender, Joe Shimoda, is back in ninth place. So he's well ahead of Joe, and all he needs to gain is an extra, what, 13 points. Yeah, yeah, that could be half of them right here in this moto. Boland, as we watch in second, so Jet Lawrence hasn't even led laps in three races. Didn't lead laps at Washugo, Unadilla, or Bud's Creek. Do you think there's any panic, or is there something wrong there, or is this championship management mode? 
championship management mode, and yep. I don't think there's any panic. And uh, it's it's what's the over and under on that? You know, honestly, the over and under on Jet not leading the lap in three straight races is that was a bit of pretty, pretty long pretty good odds, long odds there. Yep. But you know, we talk about Max Volen here, really, really spent his time, kind of a conservative kid that did not, you know, his dad's tutor, you know, I guess coaching, bringing him up. They didn't spend a lot of time on a Supercross track. He rode motocross more, so he does tend to be a little bit better motocross rider. And uh, But it, remember his coming out party at Fox Raceway where he led for 20-something laps yeah. till the bike foot? Yeah, so he's very, very capable of winning a moto. Yeah, Volan had a really rough Monster Energy Supercross season, and he said before this motocross campaign, he's like, we're just going to pretend that didn't even happen. You know, don't let that drag the confidence down, and he's really accomplished that quietly is sixth in the series standing so it's been a good year for him and you got to be impressed with Rasher here also who's ninth in points his best moto finish this year sixth and he had one of those sixth place finishes at our second moto last week at Bud's Creek so Thrasher starting to put it together and Volan starting to put it together still a little surprising to see them one two but if you really look inside the numbers, they have been slowly but surely getting better week in and week out. Well, and, and it's just as we say that, uh, as they say, don't look over your shoulder because uh, somebody might be gaining. Uh, Jet Lawrence just also turned into 2017, so that's only one-tenth of a second of, uh, away from uh, Nate Thrasher's best lap time. And it's coming uh, a little deeper into the race here after lap five. On the, and I think you're going to see Jet start making a move here forward. Yeah, he's about five seconds off, like you said. Hampshire is lurking, but yes, Jet Lawrence in fourth is definitely closer to Hampshire than he was. We talked about a lot of the young riders in this field late in the season. We'll give you the Beto Motorcycles drone cam to show you that's rider De Francisco up ahead, and then Hayden Deegan right behind him. That is 12th and 13th, so it's time right now to watch these two kids battle it out. We also have Gavin Towers making his pro debut today. Towers is in 26th. And we might even get another debut next week as Chance Hymas dominated the scouting combine for amateurs yesterday with 1-1 scores. And he's leaving hints that he might turn pro next week at Fox Raceway. So, so much young talent coming into the pro ranks here late in 2022. I'd love to have a word with either one of those guys afterwards and say, you know, where was it? What you expected? Was it, you know, did you think you were going to do better or worse? Or how was the competition? Because I'm not taking anything away from these guys. They're in phenomenal riders dominating the amateur ranks and they move up to the pros and they're right here five seconds off of the pace. And that's a, that's a significant amount. And now Thrasher has gotten away from Volan and Volan is back into the clutches of Hampshire and Jet Lawrence is coming with him. Now, Hampshire battled, battled it out last week with Moseman for a bit and then put another charge on. He's done the same here. Yeah, RJ had just a slight little peek under his shoulder as he could see that red uh -oh. bike and hear that red bike. You can feel that presence. And right there, here comes Jet. So Jet's got the speed there, getting the drive up here towards Godzilla, already putting three or four bike links on RJ. So uh, again, R I think Jet's coming. He wants to take advantage of the fact that Joe Shimoda didn't get a very good start. And he could take a big chunk of points right there on his, you know, help, help him on his way to the championship. Eighth place is Shimoda right now, so it could potentially be in play for Jet to wrap up the title early. He needs to gain 13 points on Shimoda. He's all over. Voland for the number two spot. Couldn't get the drive out of the inside of that corner, and Voland very good at scrubbing that, keeping it low. That's where he passed Hampshire, and he uses it to hold off the number one. Yeah, this is fun to watch right here. I got a chuckle out of when you said something about we're going to, you know, control, alt, delete the Supercross season completely, yeah, yeah. erase it. And uh, being a golfer, that I try to go with that motto, too. They always say that golfers uh, are the ones, best golfers are the one with the bad memories. And uh, I think motocross can say the same thing. You don't want to remember your bad days. You want to just focus on the good stuff. Yeah, nice okay. rebuild for Voland. He's been very strong this summer. Just haven't seen him much because of the starts. But now he started up front, and that means you're going to have to deal with the champ. Chet Lawrence, and meanwhile, Nate Thrasher has dropped the hammer. Four-second lead for the Yamaha man up front, so we'll watch his battle for a second. And let's send it down to Jason Thomas with more on Thrasher. Jensen Hendor, team manager for the 250 side of Monster Star Yamaha. Now, Nate Thrasher rips a hole shot. We've seen this happen in Supercross, right? He's got some unexpected wins, and he looks like he's on his way to doing that same thing here at Moto1 and Ironman. Yeah, he's riding really good. Uh, we did a lot of starts this week. We actually had Michael Lessie come out and help us out with some start technique, and looks like it paid off, so that's great. Um, he's got the speed to run up there, so we're excited to see where it pans out for sure. 
Well, the funny thing is that all the hype about Deegan, you've got Justin Cooper, you know, contending for moto wins week after week, and then it's Nate Thrasher that's stealing the headlines for now. Yeah, no doubt about it. We watched Jet Lawrence just made the move on Max Fuller, but how about the start coach, Michael Leslie, one of the greatest ever? The team brought him in. I just, uh, both of us, the look we gave each other in the booth there when he said that, that, oh, was, yeah. that was a tidbit of information. Good job, JT and then Jensen for spilling it. <laughs> Well, it's kind of the way Star operates. They leave no stone unturned. They called Mike Alessi, who no longer races at this level, one of the best in the business, and it obviously helped. Now Voland and Hampshire resume their battle. Now it's for third because Lawrence has gotten around them, but it is a good fight right now. Yeah, RJ right Woo. there about to say he's bobbling on the way into the turn. He just about fell down there. But one thing I liked what RJ was doing was he's just taking an alternative line. I mean, you can't follow in these ruts. The chances of Max making a mistake might be 10, 20%. And if he does, then you got around him. If not, at least you're not stuck in behind him. And then Cooper would be next in line. He would be fifth. There he just goes by on another one of the Yamahas. But Thrasher, now the stopwatch will tell the tale. Can Jet Lawrence track him down for the Moto win as Hampshire and Volan continue to fight? So what was it three or four laps ago where we saw that Cooper was almost on the rear fender of Jet Lawrence and now right you look on the score or the timing and scoring here and, and, and Jet's pulled seven, eight seconds on Justin Cooper. So not what Justin Cooper wanted to see, but I'll tell you right now, even those we're seeing well, Max on the Bolin, inside, Brock. Exactly, He's making his move right here. And Max might be, oh, I'm a little deflated, but not, not, you shouldn't be. I mean, really, he rode really well. He battled the champ and Jet Lawrence pretty darn hard. He's battling last week's winner really hard. So it, there's a lot to be taken away from this race by Max Volan that's very uh, positive. And he's not done. He's looking to get Hampshire back, working the inside all the way down that long straightaway. Yeah, and we saw RJ have a big crash there in practice right coming out of the first, the first corner. Reminiscent of more what you would see on a high side in a MotoGP than motocross, but uh, looks like he's physically recovered and, and didn't get too banged up. Yeah, he's up into third down that Rockstar House Marta. You see Lawrence up ahead, and he is rapidly closing. He has what was a almost five-second deficit to Thrasher, already down to 3.1, so Jets on a rail to the front. Well, right now we've got, uh, obviously, Max Fallen on camera. One thing I like when I see Max, uh, he picks up the throttle early. He doesn't overcharge the corner. He picks up the throttle early, power slides a little bit on the rear wheel, and it just keeps the front end nice and light, and it's a little easier to steer and not have the front end bouncing around. So right. he's uh, uh, kind of a, he like slows the bike a little early, picks up the throttle early, and steers a little bit with the power. There's Thrasher, your race leader on the 49, halfway home. In 15 minutes, he could save 15% or more on your insurance with a 15-minute phone call to Geico, and now Jet Lawrence looms in the shot. Yeah, Nate Thrasher, he knows. I mean, there's no question he's getting the pit board that it's uh, that number one Jet Lawrence is coming. But all you can do at this point, hey, I'm riding as fast as I can. I know I can go fast for 30 minutes plus two laps. I do it all week long. I train it. I've been doing it for years now. So just focus forward and go. You never know what's going to happen to Jet. You don't have to worry if he's behind you. If he gets you, he gets you. If he doesn't, go, go get a second. And as Jason Thomas, our, our pit reporter, alluded to, this is kind of the script on Thrasher. You won't notice him for weeks. And then all of a sudden, things come together. He had two Supercross wins last year in Atlanta, won the Supercross finale this year. So you check in on Hampshire and Volan. And now a breakout ride for him, leading them around. Cooper is starting to close on Volan for fourth. He is. He's using some of that qualifying speed that he has, and he's... Closing in on the number 36 of Max Volan. But, uh, I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, Nate Thrasher having this speed just kind of coming out of nowhere. A little inconsistent, of course. But Levi Kitchen popped off a moto win at That's Thunder right. Valley this year. And it's like, did he, has he won another one all year? No. no. And it's nope. not, he hasn't even been close. So it's uh, th th that star racing group, they've got a lot of guys in the right situation can win. And now Jet Lawrence in a situation where he could win because he's looking to make the pass on Thrasher. That's where he got Hampshire, and he takes the lead from Thrasher. That was a great racecraft move right there. Just had a little bit shorter line. You know, obviously inside line is shorter distance, carried more speed, picked a nice rut there. Good job by Jet, and then he's now got the lead, and we look back and say Shimoda's up to seventh, but uh, again, uh, he could take a big chunk, and I, I do really think... Uh, you know, of course, Jet wants to leave here with the championship wrapped up. He'd like to just go to the Fox Raceway next week and just uh, and just uh, be able to go there and say, hey, I have nothing to worry about. Championship's already mine. 
take us through it again. We got a different angle. Again, same area he passed Hampshire and he makes the move. Right, just a little bit on his inside shoulder there and then also cuts to the inside and you see his ruts just butter smooth there, pins the throttle. Nothing Thrasher can do. I mean, he's, he's going to jet could take him to all the way off the edge. Let's sit it down to JT. You know, we've been talking about this is the first lap that Jet's going to have led in three consecutive races. And, you know, I've talked to his agent, Lucas Myrtle. I've talked to people around him, and they all downplay it. They said it's not a big deal. He's got the championship weed. That's all that matters. But I'm telling you, Jet is a racer, and he cares. Like, this is a big deal to him. He knows that. He doesn't want to coast his way to a championship. He wants to win his way to a championship, and I think that's where you're seeing this fire come from. Yeah, fifth to first, and in a short amount of time. It's a nice luxury to be able to just turn it up when you want and go all the way to the front. Battles continue on this racetrack, but right now it's Lawrence leading Thrasher and Hampshire, Voland and Justin Cooper. We'll be right back from the Ironman National. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Welcome back. Ironman Raceway Battle we're watching now is for fifth. Justin Cooper has gotten around. Max Volan and Volan here in orange is now under fire from Hunter Lawrence. He's got that yellow, yellow shoulders on his gear on the red Honda going after Volan. Again, this would be for the number five spot. Well, what you're seeing right here is Max Volan's lap time starting to slip downward. In other words, going slower and slower. His fastest was a 201.9. He just turned to 207. That's too much of a drop off. You got Hunter Lawrence uh, along with uh, Jet Lawrence both being trained. Johnny O'Mara, great shape. Their lap time variance is about one second from their first, their fastest to now. Here's and, Hunter. And, and there, Hunter just makes a move right underneath him. So I'm not sure what's going on with Max. You cannot obviously drop five and six seconds between the early race laps and this lap in mid, you know, two thirds of the way through the moto. So who knows? It's it's tough. I, I never know what's going on in the condition of every rider or how they're feeling. But uh, Max is unfortunately slipping slipping into the grasp of a lot of riders. And here comes the number 30 of Joe Shimoda. And our first look at Shimoda in this moto. He's mired about 10th for a while. He has now moved up into the number seven, the number seven spot. Kitchen is up to 8th, Fedez ninth. McAdoo rounds out the top 10. Here's Shimoda on the inside. Bowen's been able to use the scrub on this jump to hold riders off. Not this time. No, man, Joe's already on the inside there. You know, we had a pleasure of watching Joe in practice show and, and watch him ride the ruts. He was very, very, very smooth and fast. And his variance between his fastest lap was a 2.023 is his fastest. He did 2.03 flat. So he's got six, six and a half, seven tenths of a second is the only difference between his fastest and what he just turned last lap. That's what you want to see out of Joe a top rider. Going after Hunter Lawrence now. This is your battle for second in the points. And we got another battle here as Hampshire has taken second away from Thrasher. So racing and good racing all over this Ironman facility. So Hampshire has taken second. Thrasher still looking for his first podium of the year. Well, at the 23-minute mark into this race right here, the cream is rising to the top. Um, and this here, you know, Joe Shimoda, Hunter has had some bad races, and he, but he clearly was the second fastest guy early in the season. I wouldn't, I, I don't think you could say that right now. I think you'd have to say Joe Shimoda has surpassed him in, in, in the speed in the late, late in this uh, season here. And Hunter trying to flip that script, holding off Shimoda, and now going after Cooper. So a three-rider battle. And these are three big hitters in this 250 class. Justin Cooper, Hunter Lawrence, Joe Shimoda. Hunter has responded to the challenge from Shimoda. Yeah, Justin Cooper's been making his way through the field. And uh, right there, that's the first time he's been under real attack other than early on maybe in the race. But he glanced over his shoulders like, whoa, I got to get in gear here. Just like Hunter did with Shimoda when the pressure came. He was able to turn it back up, hold him off, and go after Cooper. Oh, we have the wheels on the ground, no jump flag here. How are they supposed to play it on this Godzilla jump? Look at that. Wow. Two riders uh, jumped and Shimoda did not. That's going to be an interesting call yeah. right there. It sure came out from what our camera angle was, came out at like a last second. There's not much you can do. You, uh, you don't want to be checking up on a 100-foot jump at right. the last moment. You either go or you don't go. 
And Hunter had a look on the inside of Cooper. Couldn't quite make it happen. This is a great fight for fourth, fifth, and sixth. A Yamaha Honda and a Kawasaki. Oh, and Hunter, great drive into that corner. And that's going to set him up here, and he makes the move. That looked too easy, didn't it? Uh, it's an interesting move. Hunter, you know, we talk about the different riders, and, and some riders are racers, some guys are qualifiers, whatever it means. No question Justin Cooper has that extra speed to qualify really well. Great racer, too, don't, don't get me wrong. But Hunter and, and Joe Shimoda, these guys, the riders, these are the guys that just click off the lap after lap after lap. We talked about the variance being under one second for Joe Shimoda. That's what a racer does. He can do it for 30 minutes plus two laps, and he doesn't slow way down in the race. And, and these guys, with the conditions we have today, perfect weather, the heat's not going to be a factor, and these guys are running hard. Cooper has lost the aggression as you watch as the ETS drone cam. He just yielded to Shimoda. So now Lawrence and Shimoda have gotten by him, and the Lawrence versus Shimoda battle resumes. Very first race of the season, we saw Hunter Lawrence and Shimoda battle down to the last lap. And here they are toward the end of the year, still that close on pace. It's fun seeing people that know each other very well. They practice, they, they have the same age, and all these things that, you know, Joe Shimoda is almost Australian, I think. He's probably <laughs> going to develop an Australian accent. Yeah. But it's fun seeing these guys. They are very comfortable going at each other on the track and uh, hanging out afterwards together. It's, uh, it's, it's what we all love about the sport and, you know, what we're talking about paddock uh, friendships and develop and this is a fun one to watch well brock you've been hosting the press conferences after the races you get both lawrence brothers and shimoda in there it becomes a comedy show it really yeah. does actually and it depends on who's the overall winner because sometimes you kind of would prefer the time that joe was the winner he was least in the middle and kind of dividing it but uh, he, joe and, and particularly jet they go at each other they're more similar in age and they have a lot of fun together but uh, you're seeing J justin cooper we talked to justin cooper i know he was ill last week he wasn't at 100 percent physically and we don't know maybe this is some of the leftover from the a week ago it's hard it's hard to say shout out to levi kitchen here on the 59 who's moved up to eighth in his return from a wrist injury really had a good thing going this season in his first full campaign wrist injury slowed him we mentioned Fedez, the young rider out of spain who as i said has to go back to germany next weekend to race a ktm and pursue the german motocross championship he had never ridden a yamaha until a about a week and a half ago. He's got to be the fastest shelf stalker in any yeah, grocery yeah, no store in all of Spain, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, he, yeah. he, there's no, I mean, a racer's a racer, and if he's going to stock shelves in a grocery store or whatever it may be, he's got to do it wide open. Well, he said he only does it in the wintertime when he's not racing, but I, I told him, you keep riding like you're riding, you probably won't be back to the grocery store job this winter. And he looked bewildered when I said that. I, I don't think maybe he realizes it's coming at him quickly. You run top 10 right off the rip, you got a pretty bright future ahead of you. Yeah, he's got a lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. McAdoo. No, McAdoo went down there. And let's see if he can get back up, not lose a spot. Get a, oh, didn't even stall it. Good job. These, it's funny. Personally, when I raced, I never liked idle. I never liked my bike to idle. But these guys with this fuel injection, I mean, these things can lay over on the side. They can turn up the idle a little bit. And, and they don't stall very often. So it's a big advantage when it doesn't stall, especially with the four strokes. Yeah, you said ruts would be key. And here we go. Yeah, just a simple, looks like he got a little bit behind. Uh, when you're looking at this right here, it can happen to any of us, no question. But I do, it's really important to focus your eyes through the rut all the way to the end. Because when you, you're going to go where your eyes are looking. And that being the case, right there, he started to try to climb out of it, lost his balance, his leg foot got behind him a little bit, and the bike tipped over. But uh, you, you wonder if he had it all over to do, if he could just look a little further out the rut, he could have maybe ended up where he wanted to be. But it's... It's hard to say. Yeah, one of the most challenging things in motocross, you got to look where you want to go, not where you are. But it's so hard when that giant rut is in front of you to not stare at that to make sure you don't go down. But we talked about this all the way back at High Point, Brock, round four. They see, they look so much further down the track than the average or amateur rider. It absolutely do. And uh, trust me, it was a habit of mine that I fought my whole career. And I think I really didn't realize the importance of it later on until I uh, started racing cars. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hey, we got to go back and give you the motosport.com whole shot replay before this one is over. You're going to see Justin Cooper get bumped and banged around off the start. I believe that's Cooper there. And then you're going to see Voland and Hampshire going for the lead. 
Yeah, I was actually watching uh, Hayden Deegan because he was right next to the doghouse in the middle there. He's kind of in the middle, but yeah, he grabs the whole shot. Thrasher gets it, but uh, Hayden Deegan was up front there. A lot of star racing Yamahas. Imagine, oh, yeah. imagine that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was right up there. He just was on the shoulder of Lawrence. So Back to this battle with Hunter Lawrence and Joe Shimoda. It is for fourth and fifth on the track, but also every point's going to count. There's only six marks between them in the battle for second. And Hunter would like to turn it into a five-point gap if he can hold Shimoda off. That's the way it would turn out. Yeah, some of you Iron Man watchers, whoa, off to the left-hand side. Joe was uh, looking like he was maybe going to go exit the track there. But that corner right there is an uphill corner, so it automatically just gravity slows you down. It's one of those companies you just brush the throttle and just touch, brush the brakes, back off the throttle just a split second and get back on the gas. But that particular corner, if all you Iron Man watchers the yesteryear, Wow, Joe, Shimoda. nice, making a move. Uh, but he's going to be on the outside, yep. and Hunter wanted that line as well. He goes all the way over to block it, or maybe that's just the line he wanted. And either way, the 96 holding off the 30. Yep, so finish my thought on that. That corner used to have a lot of sand in it, and they've taken away a lot of that sand. It used to be a real deep sand corner, so similar to what you see in some of the Supercross tracks where they had a sand section, but uh, that is now turned into just loam, and they did bring in a lot of wood chips this last week, and uh, we've had amateur racing yesterday, the Moto Combine yesterday. Oh, oh no, again. It, it, Shimoda down, you don't see that very often, no. and that is pivotal. Let's see if he loses some track position here because of that battle for second of the points with Hunter. No, they had a big gap over Cooper, who has faded quite a bit over the last few laps. So he's not going to lose positions. But as far as beating Hunter in this moto, that's going to be a long shot now. And that'll be more points to help Hunter in that battle for second. This is uh, eerily similar to the McAdoo crash. Yep, it, very similar, exactly. That's always good to talk about it. But you can see here, Joe comes down the inside. Hard pack corner, but once he hits that berm at the bottom, you see the berm cave away. He kind of drug his peg, and the bike started to slip, trying to climb out the inside of the rut. That, those, those ruts are really, really hard packed, so he just slips away. And you can see there's moisture in the dirt, making it even more slippery. And Hunter's charge to hold off Shimoda has led him all the way to Thrasher. Third place, and he just goes right up the inside and takes it away. That was borderline through through second oh, place. Oh, wait a minute. That is Hayden yeah. Deegan out of this moto. Oh. We had him up to 11th place. Not sure if there was a crash. He is standing next to one of the trackside medics, but he might have crashed out of his pro debut. Could be a bike problem. He's putting the helmet back on, though. That's good to see. Yeah, that's great to see. There's no, you know, you really don't want to quit your very first pro race later on in life. You say, how'd you do your very first pro, pro moto? Well, I uh, fell and quit. Now, I don't think he wants to see that unless he's injured. But uh, we talk about this, and I was, I was talking earlier and in, in mentioning it's just like it's so impressive to watch. I mean, Hunter Lawrence right here, if you look at his lap time, a 2.026 is as fast as he did 2.037 last lap, 1.1. And then you see Nate Thrasher, who he just passed, was a 2.01 variance to a 2.07. Seven. Uh, again, you can't give up five and six seconds variance, and, and Hunter Lawrence isn't giving it up, and neither is Jet. I mean, Jet's got the luxury of having a nine-second lead, but uh, Hunter is keeping his lap times just so consistent and charging full-time. Well, about four laps ago, Shimoda had caught him. Shimoda was showing him a wheel. It looked almost inevitable that the pass is going to happen, and Hunter was just stingy with it. He actually upped his pace, was determined to not give it up, and then he's been rewarded because Shimoda has now gone down. He's made the move on Thrasher, so he's put a rider between them. There's Deegan off to the side, the helmet back on. Yeah, that but was a tough little section yesterday during the Moto Combine. I mean, our, our, our winner, Chance Hymas, almost went down there, as did one of my riders, Evan Ferry, Timmy Ferry's young son, and uh, who finished second overall. But both of them had huge moments there. It was almost a yard sale. So there's a tricky section over there. And that these guys are making it look so easy, especially that little hop jump over the, over the face of a really steep jump. And it, you can't tell, but it's a big drop before that uh, covered bridge. And if you clip that, it's it's not going to be pretty. And these guys making it look so darn easy, it's making me jealous. No one makes it look easier than this guy, Chet Lawrence, who just rode around in about fifth early in the moto. It's the definition of letting the race come to you. As I said earlier, it must be nice to know I can just hang out in fifth. I've got so much speed that when I want to go to the front, I could do it. And that's what he did. Yeah, he's so talented. You just see him when he comes off the top back side of that jump right there. He almost just pushes his legs down. He waits the bike, gets it back on the ground, and it's so effortless. 
Uh, it reminds me of when Jeremy McGrath was at his peak in Supercross, how you saw him hit the big jumps, and he just let the bike absorb up into his, you know, between his legs and up into his uh, crotch area of the bike, and it scrubbed the speed off, and it, it was reminiscent of what his BMX background. So I, I, I just, it, it, watching Jet is so fun, and he just, you can tell it's just casual fun. He kind of takes his hand off the bar. But the one thing I really like, Jet's really good at looking down the track. He looks at his lines, he looks forward, and again, where you look is where you end up going. Well, he's going to be going to the podium soon. We've got a half a lap to go. And yeah, if there was any worry about having not led laps in the last three races, there's that jump down. I'm telling about you, that where is he's the, gone. That's that's tricky. He came up right in the deep ruts there, and uh, that's the first time we've seen one of these top elite riders make it look a little sketchy. Woo. Can you imagine if it had changed like that? The good news is he saved it, and even better, Shimoto, second in points, is back in fifth. This is going to be about a nine-point swing in the series. He needs to gain 13 today to wrap up the title on Shimoda. And he's taking a big step toward doing that. Yeah, great final corner right here at Ironman Raceway over the finish. And boy, there it is. Sweetness. Moto one win for Jet Lawrence back on the board. Great ride for Hampshire backing up the performance at Bud's Creek where he won, taking a solid second place. And the Lawrence brothers are back on the podium together again. The drought of Lawrence brothers both on the podium. That was like uh, lasted about a minute. Feels like. <laughs> and here we are like back it. with both of them on the box again. Yeah, this is a good one right here. And RJ Hampshire, hey, congratulations. Now he's had uh, three motos in a row, a uh, first and two seconds. And uh, right, that's yeah. my memory serving me right. You got it. But uh, great job because RJ uh, was not uh, in that podium discussion very often in the beginning of the year. No, he has really turned it around, splitting the Lawrences in this one of the Rockstar Husky. There is Jet Lawrence taking that moto win. Thrasher is going to finish fourth. And Shimoda is fifth. So again, that is, by my calculations, a nine-point swing in the championship. And if Jet can gain 13 today total on Shimoda, title is his. Although his brother Hunter is mathematically part of the title picture as well. But Jet's doing all he can do to score maximum points today. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Hey, this is really cool to have Stasek on board the series, building a track for kids to learn the next generation of skills. Not so fun as this, the pro debut for Hayden Deegan ends with a crash. Not sure if he'll be back for the second moto, but the first moto not the way he wanted to end it. It is not, and it was, uh, hopefully he'll be back. Yep, so hope he's okay. Let's give you the Lucas Oil race recap real quickly here. So first, Justin Cooper gets bunched and banged around at the start. It's gonna be Boland and Hampshire battling for the whole shot. They leave the door open and that allows Thrasher to get up to the inside. Nate Thrasher has the whole shot and would lead for a while. But here comes Jet Lawrence, Brock. Yeah, Jet is just carving his way through these guys in such skillful manner. It's, it's, uh, it does look like a bit of a man amongst uh, uh, boys, but it, I don't, uh, you know, I think he just buying his time early on. And there he goes around now, Boland for the number two spot. He gets the Hampshire, same movie made on Oh, sorry, the same movie made on Hampshire he makes on Thrasher and takes over the lead and it would control the pace from there. And we talked about his eyes being really good at focusing forward and where he was exactly going forward. And jo Joe Shimoda is championship, second in the championship, washes the front end there in the rut and goes down and then it just this just plays right into what Jet Lawrence needed as he takes the win and grabs a big chunk of points. Yeah, Shimoda went into fifth. Hunter Lawrence survives that battle with Shimoda to end up third. And Thrasher would finish fourth. Let's send it down to the podium with Jason Thomas. Jet Lawrence, your first moto winner. Now, it's been a minute since you've been up here. Haven't led a lap since uh, Spring Creek. I know that had to probably feel good to get back to winning form. But it, from my perspective, it looked like you kind of found your flow about mid-race. And then once you got going, you really took it to another level there. Yeah, I just uh, was just cruising at the start, trying to find my lines. And uh, I found my lines, and I just started uh, put my head down and just start to click uh, some good lap times off and just do a good mode and end up finding my one spot where I could pass, just made sure I executed every lap when I, when I was trying to make a pass there. So now a good motor. let's hope we can go do the, do the same thing in the second motor. 
So Joe Lawrence uh, has got to be concerned with the championship a little bit, but I'm telling you, a 19-year-old only knows one thing, and that's winning. Well, that's certainly the case in that boat. He'll probably be happy to hear about the ground he made up on Shimoda in the standings. Good job by Hunter Lawrence keeping it close with that third-place finish in it. And the crowd moving around to get a new vantage point. Four motos each day. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, perfect facility and day to watch racing. This place is just absolutely beautiful. Best camping, totally flat. I don't think you need to level your camper, and yep. it's just great. And it's a place to spend a whole weekend with your family and enjoy a motocross. And then we get the hillside so you can get a good view of the track. All right, Jason Thomas is back on the podium. We'll send it back down to him. RJ Hampshire backing up last week. Pretty solid ride there. You know, I think a lot of people are wondering, was it just a Bud's Creek thing? You've been super strong there, but that was a great ride for Ironman. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I've been riding good all year. I uh, just haven't had the starts, and then, man, just struggled with myself pretty bad. Um, hey, we're a new guy right now. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, happy like happy life back home, and uh, translate to the motos. So uh, huge thanks to my whole Rockstar Energy, Husqvarna factory racing team, uh, Fly, Keens Building, Scott, um, all the boys that believe in me, man. It's uh, it's fun whenever you're battling up front and uh, have a shot at winning these things. So. Uh, yeah, just uh, happy to be here and uh, happy we were able to back that up after last weekend. Oh, RJ Hampshire turning over a new leaf in the last few races, Weech. Yeah, JT, he has a shot at the overall win again if things bounce his way in Moto2 with that second place finish. Definitely put himself in good position for it. We've done a little math back here. If Jet Lawrence makes up four more points on Shimoda and two on his brother Hunter in the second Moto, he'll wrap up the title today. Either way, we're going racing next weekend, and that'll be our season finale live from Fox Raceway. Fast lap qualifying at 1 p.m. and 2.50s start the day with racing uh, at 4 o'clock, and that is all depending on what time zone you're in. That's in California. Going to be a good one, Brock. It is. I tell you right now, I think Jet's back there telling Hunter, listen, if you get second this moto and I win, I'll let you win at Cornhole because they have some fierce Cornhole okay. battles in the pits, at the Honda pits. And so that's all he needs right there. He needs he needs a win. Hunter second, Joe third, championship. Not quite as lucrative, the Cornhole, although you would think it by watching them, but not quite as lucrative. Oh, I think a, a win is a win amongst brothers. Oh, I don't care right. if it's tiddly okay. wings. Let's go back to JT. Hunter Lawrence, it's been a rough and tumble couple of weeks. Lots of crashes, lots of chaos, but that was a great ride. Had to come from the back again, but a little aggression. You could kind of see you taking that on, and, uh, taking that out on the other riders a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm taking aggression out on anyone. No, I'm just trying to make passes happen. You know, it's uh, tough coming through the pack. Everyone's, you know, pretty relatively close in speed and section, so it makes it tough to pass. But uh, just trying to force them. I knew Joe was behind me, so I had to get going. Uh, I didn't want to stall myself and push myself into riding defensive from on him on the attack so not happy with it well there's a lot of talk about this jet Lawrence championship but guys second place is up for grabs as you guys mentioned these guys care like that's a big deal to be to be runner up in this championship yeah and he's cut the gap pretty much in half between himself and shimoda when you look at the top 10 results of this moto great job by thrasher to lead a lot of laps and finish a solid fourth cooper is sixth behind shimoda Folan seventh kitchen in his return to racing eighth Perez, another solid top 10, is ninth, And McAdoo, we saw how to crash, but still held on 4-10. That's your first 250 moto. And now the main course, the 450 championship. One point in it between Eli Tomac on the three and the 23 of Chase Sexton will have their first battle of the afternoon. We'll set it up for you when we return here on Mav TV. Because it's exactly what you want. Four motos, one point, and two riders lined up bar to bar on the gate. That's our first 250 Moto of the day. We'll be right back for 450 Moto 1. For Brock Lover and Jason Thomas, I'm Jason Wygat. Thanks for joining us here live for 250 Moto Cross on Mav TV. Congrats out to Jet Lawrence for scoring the first Moto win. And don't go anywhere, 450 Moto 1 is next.